Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for clicking on this video today. If this is your first time here, welcome. Please think about sticking around. Everybody else, a part of this family, thank you so much for being here. Your likes, your comments, your subscription, your watch hours mean everything especially to his tiny little YouTube channels. So thank you for your continued support and remember to share. Why don't you smash that like button right now while you're thinking about it? Yeah, yeah, let's do that right, right now. Okay, thanks, thanks, you're great. So we are in the middle of spectacular, spectacular 31 days of Halloween. Yeah, it's been rough, guys. I'm sorry. Um, there won't be quite 31 days of spectacular, spectacular, but I've tried. I I've tried. You know, life happens. Um, so let's get started with today. So today I am going to be doing a channeling video. So this is the second time I've done this on my channel. The first time was the White House. And to briefly describe to you what it is like to channel um, and meditate and ask for protection. And the reason I'm telling you this is I'm talking to Susan Adkins. So um, yes, there's protection around I'm burning the sage as we speak. Um, but uh, channeling is a stream of consciousness thing. So like I said before, I will not remember what I say. I will repeat, repeat myself and I might start in a sentence and go off somewhere completely different. Um, but I will have no clue what I said. But I did take some notes like I talked about earlier. Um, while I've been, I did some meditation and chatting with her and, um, fair warning, if this bothers you, because I will be talking about the Tate murders, I will be talking about the Manson family. If this stuff bothers you, I am totally fine with that. I will see you guys next time. No, I will not be doing any sort of channeling or reading Tara for Charles Manson ever and he is back on this side so um yeah we have that to look forward to thanks 2020 um yeah he was born this year um anyway so i'm gonna talk to you a little bit about susan adkins life and what the conversation i had with her was and whatever else she wants to tell me so general information Susan Adkins was born on May 7th, 1948 and died in uh, 2009. I believe she had um, cancer. I don't remember what type of cancer she had though. Um, she grew up, um, her parents were both alcoholics and they moved around a lot. Her mother passed away from cancer and after that they were the dad was trying to give away the children to somebody who would take them and Susan just went off on her own. Um, she became a homeless teenager who met Charles Manson uh, because she was squatting at a residence that had been raided six or seven times on that last time that it was raided. She met Charles Manson and immediately thought he was Jesus. Um, she was known as Sadie Miglitz, AKA, or Sexy Sadie. Um, she was married twice while she was an inmate in California prisons and had one son prior to being arrested. Um, that child was uh, taken away from her when obviously she went to jail and was adopted name change and nobody knows what happened to that child and thank goodness because that child needs their own life um, obviously now he's an adult but he needs his own life away from any of this and that was probably the best chance for him um, she was the longest surviving female inmate in California the reason that was was um, California turned over, California Supreme Court turned over the death penalty, so any convictions for the death penalty prior to 1972 were grandfathered into then a life sentence. So um, 
Susan Adkins went from being on death row to being part of life on or life in jail. Um, now Susan Adkins got her education while she was behind bars and found God and, you know, said she repented that she tells me now that she had no idea what the word repented meant. She does now after death, but while she was alive, she didn't know what it meant. Even though she spoke the words, she acted like she was sorrowful and mournful and she acted like she wasn't uh, happy with the things that she did. She was not really remorseful at all. Um, even though she presented herself to be and she even convinced herself but she had no idea what real redemption was or no idea what really, really, really what remorse was. Um, she tried multiple times to be paroled, especially the last part of her life when she was dying. And the parole board turned her down every time, deeming her a danger to society. And thanks to Sharon Tate's sister, who was there every step of the way, plus some other of the victims, and I, I don't remember all their names, I apologize, but they, especially Susan, or sorry, especially Sharon Tate's sister, she was the biggest advocate for her dead sister. And she made sure that everybody remembered the brutality that happened that day and how Susan Adkins willingly took part of it. And Susan is telling me that she really hated the sister, um, really, really hated her because she was, in her eyes, the reason she was still behind bars, she was not a danger to society, yada, yada, yada. Um, she doesn't feel that way now, but when she was alive, that was her biggest annoyance was her sister with, with Tate's sister who was a thorn in her side and thank God for people like Tate's sister. I can't remember her name. I'm sorry. I'll put it up here later um, because she was an advocate for her sister and her nephew that remember she was pregnant so two people died that day. She was eight and a half months pregnant. She could have given birth at any moment. Two people died that day. And Susan Adkins was responsible as well as everybody else in that house. And if there weren't people out there advocating for the story, for the victims, then more and more people would be out on the street or not going to jail at all or not finding any sort of justice and while we can make any statements about the justice system here in the United States you're probably all right but people like Susan Adkins should not be walking around free and she admits that now she was very sinister she had a great mask she really knew how to put it on for the cameras because she was taught how to do that by Charles Manson. She still talked to Charles Manson till the day that he died. You know, they exchanged notes. They, you know, it was, it was very easy for them to communicate. So, um, yeah, don't think for a second that, and she wants this well known. Don't think for a second that she ever was remorseful when she was alive. Don't think that she really felt what it was like to take human lives and the consequences of it. The consequences were annoying to her. They weren't anything that she felt she deserved. Um, she didn't understand the process of rehabilitation. She actually, she says she should have been grateful because the sentence was changed to life in prison and that still meant she had a life and she felt like she, um, she took advantage of things both positively and negatively to get what she wanted. Um, but 
yeah, don't be fooled by anything that she ever said in public or in interviews because she was a master manipulator. Um, yeah, she was, um, she was proud of that. She was very proud of the fact that she can manipulate people. Um, she got a lot of people on her side. She had a lot of letters. This is how reason, one of the ways she met her husband's was through letters that they poured in after she did interviews like on 60 Minutes and stuff like that. She didn't give a crap. She didn't. There was nothing there. Her finding God was a joke too. Um, she, she didn't worship anything. She was very egocentric. She did not see anything beyond herself. And part of the reason why is because she was uneducated. And I'm not talking about being book smart. I'm talking about world smart. I'm talking about common sense. For the age that she was when she met Charles Manson, she her mind was actually very, very immature. And yes, that had to do with you know, not being brought up by stable parents and having a death of a mother very young. But Susan's telling me she was responsible. She was responsible. This was her thing. And it, it would have been different if she would have had a loving, stable home and the education to understand. And like I said, however you want to take the word education, but she didn't have the education to understand that she was being manipulated. Her education was at the foot of a psychopath who taught her how to manipulate, taught her how to lie, taught her how to feel nothing. And yes, while she was on a lot of drugs and everything like that, she could have stopped herself at any time. She could have walked away at any time and she wants to make that very well known right now she was responsible she wants the world to know that she was responsible she did not take any responsibility during her lifetime in fact she told in interview after interview after interview that she never touched anybody that's not true she is telling me that she a hundred percent participated in the murders she had blood on her hands literally figuratively she was the one that wrote pig out of sharon tate's blood on the wall and she didn't have blood on her hands because of that she stabbed sharon tate multiple times she really she partook in the whole event. She partook in the event that happened the day before, I believe, with the, the couple. She was there stabbing them. You know, she was a ruthless psychopath killer. Really ruthless. And she had no remorse for anything at all that she did at all. She did say, um, oddly enough, that she listened to Elvis and preferred the Stones. She didn't even really like the Beatles. So the whole Helter Skelter thing, she thought it was not insanity, but she didn't like the name. Um, I don't know why she wants people to know that, but she liked it. it she's even like having her hands up in there and she's like, I didn't even like the Beatles. Like, they were okay and everything, but I was a Stones girl. Um, yeah. When she took the lives that she did, she basically opened up herself for other things to come into her body. Souls, de demons, whatever, entities, sickness. She killed herself the day that she killed the other people and every time she killed after that she was just as much killing herself again you are you welcome things into your body because you are no longer you you are shattered 
you are not the same person after you murder somebody. And since she murdered multiple people, she brought multiple things into her life because she was completely shattered. And cancer was one of them. And she willed that into her life because she was hoping she would have been dead sooner. She didn't want to live out her life in prison. She was really freaking bored there, really angry. Like she's really angry there and she hated it and she didn't want to be there. And she thought, I mean, really, really angry, but she thought that she should be able to get out and walk around the streets when she was alive. Now she's telling me she probably would have murdered people. <laughs> she would have been a scam person for elderly people. And she's telling me this very clearly. So she's telling me she would have scammed elderly people, probably taken their medicines, um, probably slowly kill them, but she would have done it and no remorse. Um, again, she didn't live a life of remorse or redemption or anything like that. Again, master liar, master manipulator. Okay. There are two things that she wants me to say. Um, one is a sentence. One is a confirmation. Well, both are confirmation. So, a hundred percent Roman Polanski hired the Manson family to carry out these murders. And I know I saw it said that in the Sharon Tate video, but this is confirmation that she wants people to know 100% without a doubt, Roman Polanski set this up. And now she's saying elephants with the trunk out like this. I don't know what that means, but that is confirmation for a very particular person. Somebody has been following this for a very long time and they've been trying to put the connect, put the connection together, saw a lot of outside pieces, but whatever the elephant with the trunk up means to this particular person, this is Susan's validation to whoever this person is that yes, you're correct. Roman Polanski set this up. Remember, Charles Manson was not smart. He was a manipulator. He was not smart. He was not intelligent. He was able to manipulate people. He would not have come up with this on his own. He had a backer, which was Roman Polanski. He was Roman Polanski was not the only one. This was going to be the first of many murders. And while that has been said multiple times, I want you guys to understand that Yes, there were going to be more murders, but they were backed by people. Backed by people with lots of money. Okay? Lots of money. This was not an accident. This wasn't some stupid story where, you know, I'm going to kill in this place because, you know, some guy who rejected me for a record deal used to live here. Well, they don't live here anymore. I'm going to kill everybody in the house. If anybody actually believed that, that you're, you're, no, you're foolish. And she's even like shaking her head and going, oh my God, I can't believe people believe that stupid story. That was all Charles. That was all him. Yeah. She told me that Tex Watson is the devil. If she ever believed that there was a devil, Tex Watson would be it. Not Charles Manson. It would have been Tex because he had... He had traded his soul a long time ago, long, long time ago. And he was an empty shell of a person and he was truly evil. Um, if there was anybody to be physically afraid of in that group, it would have been him. He had no problem killing. He killed multiple times. He killed like it was chewing gum. You know, he, he was, I think he's still alive. I, you know, I don't know. But she told me if there ever was a devil, I looked the devil in the eyes the day I met Tex. And I believe she's correct. He will, if he's not gone already, he will also flip right back into 
the world. Um, again, something we really don't need, but he'll be back. Where is Susan Adkins right now? Um, she is at a place that I am not familiar with. So that's all I can really tell you. It's not heaven. It's not hell. I don't even know if it's purgatory, but she is being healed. Um, a willing participant in her afterlife rehabilitation. So she has been given a chance and, um, she's telling me that she's not squandering it away. She's going to do the best that she can. Um, she will have to repeat the life cycle multiple times, but she has been given the benefit of a review and some soul lessons before she bounces back into another life where as Charles Manson flipped right back in. And like I said, I don't know if Tex Watson's dead or alive, but he'll flip right back in too. Um, so will many other people who are part of this whole debacle that we're just talking about, Susan. Um, so just the last thoughts, last things that I have for her, she's still screaming out elephant. And I mean, I don't mean like screaming like, ah! like elephant, elephant, elephant. So that's definitely for somebody. I don't know who that is for. So hopefully somebody will get that, but that is a validation for someone. Um, and she wants me again to remind everybody that Charles Manson wasn't that smart. And, um, she is now not enamored with him. She now can see how just stupid he was. And this is all her words. Um, she believes that he was a snake and a wolf in sheep's clothing type thing. He really did present himself to be things that he wasn't. And he was, like I said, a master manipulator and she learned from the best. But at the end, she out manipulated him because she kept herself alive and kept herself moving um, and was able to get interview accesses and things like that that nobody else did because of her manipulation. Um, so she's got some pride things that she needs to work on um, and she knows all this. She is just telling me she's not perfect. I know, I know I'm being rough, but you know, she murdered people in cold blood, including a baby. So I really can't give her much room, but, um, yeah, just remember, um, okay. She's doing this. So she's in prayer. Um, that's something completely different. So she's got to be in a higher level. Um, she wouldn't be in a lower level doing this, but she is contemplating in prayer and she is asking for protection of her son and to make sure he has a normal life as possible. She does know where he is now. Um, but she protect him from mama is what she's saying. Protect him from me. Don't let him be like me. Um, yeah, she's in, in prayer. So she is, now she's remorseful and now she understands that she was kind of a monster. Um, and yes, she wasn't perfect. And I, I acknowledge that, but she's in prayer. Um, so that means that she is in a higher level than what I, I even realized. I don't know. There's many different levels. I don't know. But wherever she is, she's learning and praying. And this time it's for real. You know, no putsy onsies or anything like that. This time it's real. Okay. Well, that is enough time with Susan Atkins. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope that you guys will remember to please like, comment, and subscribe. Smash that like button right now. Right now. It won't cost you anything. It's very easy. Just go boop. 
and then smash the like button. It's really easy. Um, I, I hope that you guys will also watch the rest of Spooktacular Spooktacular. I have a very nice playlist made. I've been working very hard on it. Um, I am booking readings. So www.lisatbrink.com or you can comment down in the comments. You can ask me. And I'm going to try to do a live reading on Halloween. Now, that is a try. That is, uh, I really would, really would like to end Spooktacular, Spooktacular, 31 Days of Halloween by doing a live reading. Um, I will give you details as we get closer to that date. So remember, every single day is a gift. Use your time wisely. Take care, and I will see you later. Bye for now.